The curtain on this three-act play rose in Montreal, June 20th, 1980. Five months later, the second act in New Orleans, known forever as No Mas. Which brings us to December 7th, billed as Uno Mas, but the pre-fight show exceeded expectations while the fight didn't. It's the hot old acts that packed them in in Las Vegas. Frank Sinatra, Bill Cosby, Diana Ross. The seniors tour of showbiz. Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran. The seniors tour of boxing. Hi, I'm Larry Merchant. Like you, I've been thrilled by the fights these champions have given us in the 80s. Leonard Hearns, Hagler Hearns, Hagler Duran, Leonard Hagler. Each one a passionate drama. Until Leonard Duran III. Promoted as Uno Mas, then savaged as Uno Mes, and Mickey Mas. Was it that bad? Or did it just not live up to the very high standards of its predecessors? And why was the overwhelming winner blasted almost as fiercely as the overwhelming loser? Will it be, should it be, no Mas for Sugar Ray Leonard and his senior playmates? We'll show you the entire fight, enabling you to answer some of the questions. Then Ray Leonard will answer the rest of them in an interview. We'll focus on the highlights of the fight and discuss his future options. Isn't Michael Nunn really the biggest challenge left out there for him? Now December 7th, the last major fight of the decade. It's the first big splash at a typically ostentatious brand new hotel on Las Vegas' Glitter Strip. This massive $630 million facility sounds a new voice in bidding wars for the senior soiree Super Bowls of boxing. Lavish decor, spectacular setting, the obligatory match for an international media event. From the Mirage in Las Vegas, Nevada, HBO Sports presents a special edition of World Championship Boxing. Tonight, WBC Super Middleweight Champion Sugar Ray Leonard defends his title against Roberto Duran in about scheduled for 12 rounds. So much history behind this matchup of two legends of the sweet science. So many unanswered questions from their two previous encounters. So many intriguing new issues in a duel of aging gunslingers. Only 16,000 have the privilege of seeing this third act live at the new outdoor arena behind this incomparably fantastical hotel. 
Millions of others around the world bear witness through the magic of television. It's been nine long years since last Duran and Leonard met. Let the curtain rise now on Act Three. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you back to Vegas, where for the third time in the past 13 months, our HBO expert boxing commentator, Sugar Ray Leonard, is not with us on the microphones, but rather in the ring. So again, I'm joined tonight solo by HBO boxing analyst, Larry Merchant. And Larry, all great fights have atmosphere, but as your more sensible attire will tell the viewers, the atmosphere tonight has a little to do with atmospherics, more so than at previous big fights. Just because I had to buy lift tickets to get up here, what <laughs> makes you think there's anything unusual? <laughs> it is cold. Uh, colder than any fight I have ever been to. But back in the ring, it will be warm. The two warmest people in the place will be Roberto Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard. And if anything, this chill may invigorate these senior citizens. Indeed, we're getting ready to watch a fight for which the public has shelled out many millions of dollars, and the combined age of the two fighters is 71 years. A curiosity? Sure, it's a curiosity, but they've earned that kind of status. The people have voted with their dollars, with millions and millions of dollars, that this is an event they want to see. And I think we can find three clear reasons for it. One, Sugar Ray Leonard is a fighter of the 80s, as Roberto Duran was a fighter of the 70s. They've entertained us and thrilled us and amazed us for many years. Second, their personal history. In the first fight, Roberto Duran bent Sugar Ray Leonard to his will. In the second fight, Sugar Ray Leonard broke Roberto Duran's will. And third, it has to do with the contrast in their styles in and out of the ring. It's machismo versus charismo. Roberto Duran is one of those street kids, almost primitive, the kind of a person that even his mother sometimes have a hard time liking cursing, raging, wild animal in there sometimes, but what a fighter. And Sugar Ray Leonard, the sunshine kid with the thousand watt smile, everybody's hometown hero, smooth in the ring, a smooth talker, two contrasting great athletes, and this is a rare event that will be a part of boxing history. Indeed, to a large degree, the fireworks and the loud music are unnecessary. Two historic figures in the sport. Each has won once. Now they get ready for the rubber match. The Fists of Stone, Roberto Duran. 92 fights in his 20 years in the ring. 497 rounds, an unparalleled dossier of experience among superstar fighters of this particular generation. For one night in New Orleans, the hands of stone became the feet of clay. But that was the only night on which Duran did anything but come and bring his best to the ring. One of the more mysterious events in the history of all sports, the last guy on the planet you would have expected to give up. I've always marked it down, Jim, as a moment of temporary insanity. And indeed, in the promotion leading up to this bout, many have liked to say, that that must have eaten at Duran every night for nine years and must be a big part of his mental picture coming into this fight. I find that hard to believe, Larry. What about you? I do, too, but every time, of course, he shows up at a fight, uh, people ask him the question, they force it on him, and, of course, it is involved. And he has told some people in private that this is the thing that he has wanted more than anything else in his life, a chance at redemption. The question is, is whether redemption is his coming in here and giving the best possible performance he can, or whether it means that he feels he has to beat Sugar Ray Leonard. Duran just now comes into the view of people inside the arena. against him. He's 38 years old. 
He weighed in at 158, but as recently as two and a half months ago, he may have been somewhere over 190. Of course, he's shown in the past that he's able to do that, able to lose weight in a few months. Uh, as long as he hasn't thrown it off in the last 10 days or two weeks, it might not hurt him, but some people think he's a bit gaunt at this weight. He got here on the strength of a spectacular comeback performance in February of 1989, this year, against Iran Barkley in Atlantic City. And it was that fight which won him his present middleweight championship. Thirty-three-year-old Sugar Ray Leonard now. Twelve years, 37 fights, 273 rounds. Only once in his career a loser. That by unanimous decision to Duran in Montreal in 1980. And what we're looking at here is the, the fighter's face of Ray Leonard, as he called it. That he had to get back to being a fighter, not so much as a performer, and letting his fighting speak for himself as a performer. That longshoreman's cap makes him feel not like the multi-multi-millionaire that he is, but like a guy who has to get into the pit with one of the great fighters of all time. Indeed, there were dramatic procedural changes leading up to this fight. An entourage which had grown to as many as 20 surrounding him for his fight against Thomas Hearns in June was stripped down to only five close associates in training for this fight. wins, one loss to Duran, the draw with Hearns on June 12, one ominous statistic that weighs against Leonard coming in here tonight. He's been knocked down three times in his last two fights. Tale of the tape, you see the disparity in age. Leonard with the height advantage and the reach advantage. Duran weighed in at an extremely trim 158 pounds. Leonard at 160, less than he weighed against Turns. And here is our punch stat of nine years ago of their two fights, the total number of punches, an offensive profile of the two fighters. As you can see, there's a difference in how many punches Leonard threw in the first and second fights, as well as Duran because of the different styles Leonard employed in those fights. Rules for the bout. Three judges scoring the fight on the 10 point must. No standing eight, no three knockdown rule. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Now we go to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for pre fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Mirage here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tonight, the Mirage presents World Championship Boxing. The promoter for this event is Top Rank Incorporated in association with the King of Beers, Budweiser. It is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman, Dr. James Nave. The commissioners are Dwayne Ford, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Jay Nady, and Lou Remack. Executive Director, Chuck Minker. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo, Dr. Flip Homansky, and Dr. Albert Campana. The timekeepers, Al Bicek, counting for the knockdown seconds, Mike Lachella. Representing the World Boxing Council at ringside is its president, Jose Suleiman. And the supervisor at ringside for the WBC is Nevada State Commissioner, Dr. Elias Ghanem. The three judges scoring this foul on the 10-point must system will be Joe Cortez from New Jersey in the United States, Bob Logis of Belgium, and Jerry Roth from Nevada in the United States. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mirage, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. The referee for this bout for the 69th time the world title bout is Richard Steele. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in today at 158 pounds even. In 92 professional bouts, 
He scored 85 victories with 61 KOs and garnered four world championships. Tonight, he is the challenger again. Señoras and señores, con el barrio Torrio en el ciudad de Panamá, el hombre con los palos de tierra, Roberto. from Potomac, Maryland, this 1976 Olympic gold medal champion has a professional record of 35 victories, 25 by KO against only one defeat and one draw, with six world championships in five different weight divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the WEC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Sugar! Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you again, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Ray Leonard is bigger, stronger, faster, younger. The logic is on his side, Jim. But if there's any fighter in the world who can turn the logic upside down, it's Roberto Duran. For better or for worse, he's done both in his career. Leonard yesterday in a conversation with us, was agitated, edgy, as close to hostile as I think I've ever seen him, Larry. They're both highly motivated for this fight. the case against Hearns five months ago. Only one punch thrown in the fight so far, and now Duran opens the festivities from his side. If Leonard is going to move about the ring, problem number one for Duran is to find a way to get inside and make contact. Straight left by Leonard. He's used his jab effectively several times in the first minute of the round. Duran is not the little raging bull that he was nine years ago. But he's also a slow starter in many of his fights. He moves forward hoping to make his opponent lead so that he can counterpunch. That's what he's basically trying to do. Another good left by Leonard. The left and the right both just a little bit short. in round one. She made the point effectively, Larry. Duran was tremendously effective countering off of Barkley's aggression back in February. Observation, Leonard looks faster with his hands than was the case in June against Hearn. Of course, it's all relative. Duran is nowhere, doesn't present the problems that Hearns, who is taller, 
younger and faster than Duran. A, a strong tactical round for Ray Leonard. As we go to Roberto Duran's corner, our translator is former world champion Ruben Castillo. Water, water. Bob and Wade, move. When he starts going through it, he moves. Move, move a lot and you make him panic. You'll make him panic. Understand. There you see Ray Leonard with a blanket, keeping warm. Three rounds. Not a bad idea. Now. Another indication of just how they've thought through this fight, looking for every little edge. Duran made a funny motion as he walked to his corner at the end of the last round, kind of a resigned motion with the hands, as if to say, I'm not really warmed up. I don't feel good yet. His nose is red and could be half from the cold as well as from Leonard's dad. Temperature outside the ring lights, we're told, 45 degrees. second fight in a way, reminding us that since this is a three-act drama, it's a harken back to that second fight. In round two, Leonard scored four effective right hands to Duran's ribcage. Don't be like this all night long, fellas. All right. Mouthpiece is coming out this round. Okay? Get that Vaseline back on his face again. Okay? Okay? We go with the double stick. Unless you kind of throw a right hand off a single jab, we go with the double stick. Okay? Now, he don't lock it in the body, I can see it already. Every time you get a chance, heal in the body, but you want to go to the body with both hands. You drop a, off a jab, you drop a hard right hand to the body, come back with the left hook to the head. Got it? You forget about his clowning around. Throw your jab. Don't let him touch your face. With a little work, your punches will come out. The numbers in that round, Jim, are devastating. Ray Leonard landing 60% of his punches. Uh, people forget that in his prime, 
Roberto Duran, although he was a tremendous aggressor, was also a wonderful defensive fighter. Well, those numbers also show Duran with an extremely low landing percentage, down at 10%, reminiscent of the second fight in New Orleans, when Duran had great difficulty landing punches, only 5% of his jabs, only 19% of all punches in that rematch before Duran elected to say, no mouse. Another right Very hand good. to the bottom. Yes. There's a feeling that that Duran is vulnerable to the body because he keeps his hands so high. Leonard becoming more aggressive now. Stepped up inside with the left hand and landed a short right as well. There had been a lot of suspicion coming in here tonight, Larry, that the crowd would line up more behind Duran than behind Leonard. So far, there's been no reason for the chance of Duran, Duran, or Cholo, Cholo. I don't know if Ray has won the crowd over, but Duran may have lost it. Of course, the first time he does something, he'll hear it. But Ray is giving him a boxing lesson right now. And a beating. There was a solid right hand and a good left hook in that last exchange. That right hand landed on the shoulder. Another good body punch. Ray working a lot downstairs and with great effect. his head off the left hand but Leonard continues to start and finish most of the exchanges and as we go back to the corners one note over the years there have been many voices in Ray Leonard's corner Angelo Dundee Janks Morton Dave Jacobs tonight there is only one that is the trainer in charge now, Jose Pepe Correa. That's another big change for Ray Leonard coming into this fight. And Roberto Duran forgot his corner. Didn't know, it looked like he didn't know where he was going. And Ray took advantage of that chance to taunt him oh at close God. range. He's gonna always be late. Don't get macho with him, man. Get, him, get macho on the later rim. He's gonna always be late, okay? Too much speed for him, sugar baby. Watch Ray as he spins him around and throws the left hook again too quick for Duran. This is another angle on it. So Duran's corner wants more aggression from him. And Leonard's corner wants him to keep doing what he's doing. With good reason. If you're going to compare it to the first two bouts, so far it has looked a great deal more like New Orleans than like Montreal, but Ray is landing harder punches tonight than he did that night in the Superdome.
to the body. Durant still looking for every chance to counter. One champion is giving another champion a clinic on boxing right now. And Durant doesn't look like he has the quickness or the fire to do much about it at this point in the fight. Doesn't seem to have a way to get inside and mount an assault himself. Leonard, as you point out, Larry, dictating the tempo and the style of the fight. This is a rubber match, but it's Leonard with all the bounce in the fight. The kind of movement he showed through much of the fight against Marvin Hagler two years ago. Not the stationary slug away Leonard that we saw so often against Donnie Lalonde and Thomas Hearns. Exasperated. He took the kind of punch at the end of that round, a straight left into his mush that I've never seen him take before. Throw the jab, you have When you start your jab, you're starting to mark your jab, you're getting your distance. And now he's starting to stand straight. He's a little stationary. Now he's not dancing. Harold Letterman, our unofficial official, how do you score it so far? Larry, four rounds to nothing, 40 to 36 favor Sugar Ray Leonard. This is absolutely beautiful ring generalship. When we score fights, a ring generalship, clean punching, effective aggressiveness in defense. Ray Leonard is going to his right, going to his left, keeping Roberto Duran totally off balance so Duran can't get off. some blood in his mouth. Apparently. Yeah, Ray Leonard bleeding from the mouth between rounds. <laughs> May encourage him to be a little bit more aggressive, and there's enough blood that it's dripped out onto Duran's shoulder. Well, he said he wanted to feel more like a fighter than a performer, and there's nothing like blood to make you feel like a fighter. Or taste like a fighter, I guess. that Duran's people were encouraging him to mark Leonard with the jab. The jab has never been a major part of Duran's arsenal in terms of its damage on the opponent. He uses it only to set up other punches. Duran's starting to show signs of desperation. Go to corner, go to corner. Richard Steele wants a piece of tape removed from Leonard's glove. Pepe Correa steps right up and wraps more over. trying to rouse Durant. The chance is Durant, Durant. Leonard fending him off with the jab.
to a close. Leonard continues to circle away. Duran continues to chase. And when they meet, much more often than not, it is Sugar Ray Leonard who begins and ends each sentence. Fingers of Eddie Aliano working inside Leonard's mouth. Eddie Aliano, one of the best cut men in the sport. This is a, from the fourth round when apparently that butt right there is what bloodied Ray Leonard's mouth. I was wondering where it came from, Jim, because I didn't remember a punch strong enough to do that. Exactly. You're the man out here. Okay. A well-conditioned Roberto Duran is, under most circumstances, as comfortable a fighter as you'll ever see in the ring. A true natural, as his longtime associate Ray Arcel described him last week. Duran tonight has looked edgy, frustrated, out of sorts, astonishingly uncomfortable in the ring. Well, Ray Leonard is impaling him with that jab. And, and he, if you can't get out of the way of the jab, either to the body or the head, there isn't much you can do. Ray slipped. As Duran landed a left hand, and that aroused the crowd for a moment. That was one of the first times all night when Duran appeared to think that he had sighted the target. Let the right hand go. Roberto Duran always celebrating for being this fierce predator, but right now he's a toothless tiger. Richard Steele warning Leonard not to hit on the break. Let's take a look. There's a straight right hand 
Not a hard right hand, but a good straight right hand by Ray. And, and now he is obviously feeling that Duran has nothing to hurt him with. And after the bolo punch, Richard Steele told him not to hold and hit. Roberto Duran thought, dreamed of, and worked nine years to get Ray Leonard back in the ring. But all his energy and the years may have used him up in getting here because now that he's here, he doesn't appear to be able to do anything about it. And you may have seen the statistic on the screen charting Duran's success, or rather his dramatic lack of success with the jab, landing at 6% so far in the bout. Leonard has been a different story. At the weigh-in this morning, when Roberto Duran came in at 158 pounds, there were some who gasped and said, for him, he looks magnificent. What a great job of training. But there were others, maybe wiser, who said, oh, no, too much. He's overtrained. He has lost too much weight. He won't have the necessary snap in the ring. Good left hand by Leonard again. He weighed 156 for Bronte last February, and that was one of the real reasons that he was able to show so much uh, snap and endurance at that time. Now, he didn't appear to lose the weight quickly, at least in the last three weeks before the fight. But putting on weight and taking it off does take a toll in the long, in the long run. And right here in the short fight. look of supreme confidence right now believing based on the record of the bout so far that he can do just about anything he wants although this is just the seventh round jim ray leonard is, is building such an edge in points that already uh, duran is going to have to do something very dramatic uh, to turn the, not only to turn the tide in his favor, but to win the fight. Yeah, that focus. Give me the sponge. Get it. He said he's tired. He's tired now. Put him more. Give more pressure to him. Breathe. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Deeper. Through your mouth. Breathe through your mouth. They told Roberto Duran in his corner that Ray Leonard was getting tired, but Roberto Duran is too old and too wise to buy that. I can hardly believe 
that Duran walked through that punch. <clears throat> Maybe it was more arm and more and more sound than real fury, but it sure looked like a big punch, Jim. I think it caught the glove after it landed on Duran's face, and maybe that's where the big sound came from, but it was a solid shot. Gives you an appreciation for what kind of a right cross Thomas Hearns had to throw to stiffen Duran with one punch in the second round. That was back in 1984. Duran was able to fight such a wonderful fight against Barkley because Barkley stood right in front of him and traded him. But he really can't handle this movement. Again, the right hand lands flush on the jaw. Probably not any of the first three. So it's hard to imagine that he's anything but well behind on points. Leonard releasing his hands rapidly inside with the piston-like combinations which once typified his action in the ring. painting a masterpiece and the masterpiece is of a great old but defeated fighter Roberto Duran take a look there there's the right hand that he threw looks like he got every ounce of that 160 pounds into it I don't care how much he could be a dime late only thing only hope he has is to try to get the right hand left hook coming in his car he can't do it because you're too fast for him all right? Don't sit on the rope. When you see him coming in, slot over and bust him. All right. Okay. The hell, hell with the crowd. Huh? The hell with the crowd. The hell with the crowd. Don't let him get you moving to the point where you want to do something different. Don't worry, man. Don't let him get you here. Okay. Hey. Let's go. 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 You're okay, baby. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. All right, baby. All right, baby. Stop that right hand. You see, too. Ray Leonard has landed two-thirds of his jabs through this round, through eight rounds. And Ruben Castillo now reports to us that between those two rounds, the folks in Duran's corner told him that he is way behind, that he trails big in points, and that he must try to find a way to knock Ray Leonard out. Come 
Angelo Dundee, Ray Leonard's original trainer as a professional, said he thought that this could turn out to be a, a tactical fight for Ray Leonard. And he's proving to be right. If this weren't Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran, we might say this is a, a one-sided, sort of dullish fight. And as Ray Leonard's relationship with his audience continues to evolve, this is, despite its dominance, not the kind of performance which is going to win back or win over a lot of hearts. Well, when they announce the scores, if nothing happens between now and the 12th round, uh, that score will win over some people because it is total, complete domination. Couldn't be more total without a knockout. Yes, tonight if the judges get to make this decision, there's likely to be no question. Leonard again beating Duran to the punch inside. To Ray's credit, he never endeavored too hard to cast favorable light on his draw with Hearn. Verbally, he has played the role of the loser. Said he wanted to find something else. Wanted to see if he could come back from that performance. Changed a lot of things and apparently found a lot of the answers. And dances back to his corner, again triumphant in that round. Beautiful! 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 Now, look what you got here. When you touch him in the belly, you're already down there. All you got to do is shoot your right hand over top on the, on the chin. If you miss it, step in and spin around him. All right? I'll stay to the right. Stay to the right. You'll kill him with the right turns. He's going to always be late. Keep him missing. What round we got? Tenth round. Tenth round, round coming up here. You gotta throw your right hand. Watch Ray throw. He threw a short right and came back with a hard left. That right was just a sucker punch to sucker Duran into the left. Executed beautifully. Well, he's had a good night. Three rounds to go if they're going to go the distance. Once again, Roberto Duran got what he wanted by getting this fight, but he's not getting what he wanted in this fight. Two solid right hands to the rib cage and another. Ray has been punishing to the body. We saw the punch count statistics that showed Duran landing only 15% of all the blows he's attempted. Only Duran's great pride is keeping him going. He needs to finish this fight. And well, he can't turn his back and walk away, can he? No. Punch to get out of there. Punch to get out. Come on. And it's interesting, Jim, that Ray Leonard stopped taunting him. I think he has too much respect for him as a fighter to do that. Two days ago at a press conference, Ray Leonard hinted that this might be his last fight. But there are a lot of potential opponents in the house tonight. Marvin Hagler, Ray Leonard, Michael Nunn. I mean, not Ray Leonard, but uh, of course Tommy Hearn. It's not hard to imagine Leonard accepting any one of those three fights coming off this performance. Ray wanted to prove to himself, to the world, that he could still fight. It's not as well as he fought when he was 23, about as well as any 33-year-old you're going to see. And better than he fought against Lalonde and Hearns. That's really what he wanted to show. Durant 
isn't doing a no-moss here, but it may be no-moss for his career, Jim, even though he still owns a middleweight championship. Duran took some heavy punishment in the last 20 seconds of round number 10. And he may be staring, as you say, Larry, at the last six minutes of his career. If you want to win this fight, you got to win these last two rounds. We're in Las Vegas. You've got to win. You've got to throw punches. Throw punches however you can. Just throw them. by telling him that he might lose the decision because he's in Las Vegas. They could be in Kathmandu. And I don't think Duran would have many points in this fight. Ray is comfortable enough now that between rounds he was making eye contact with friends at ringside and raising his eyebrows as if to say, we're doing all right. Jim, there are many ways to give up in a fight. Sometimes a fighter goes down. Sometimes a fighter quits. In this case, Roberto Duran really isn't even trying to do what he knows in his mind he has to do to win the fight. Perhaps he is that he's they, given up on the fight. Yeah, he, he would take too much punishment in return for what Absolutely. it would take to try to get inside and hit Red. Absolutely. It's better to just stand out there and last the last six Punch minutes. Punch the guy. Punch the guy. Well, whether better or not, it appears to be what he chose. This is a masterful performance by Ray Leonard. But to keep it in perspective, it's against a 38-year-old fighter who just isn't in his league anymore. And who was at his peak of greatness at 135 pounds, not 158. It's hard to remember that 10 years ago he was voted the greatest light heavyweight in boxing history by boxing. Greatest writer. lightweight. Lightweight, excuse yeah. me. And of course, he's had a remarkable career. Him, him going from 135 to all the way to 160 pounds and winning titles is uh, the equivalent of Henry Armstrong winning featherweight to welterweight titles. Of course, when he beat Ray Leonard in Montreal, he went up in weight to 147 pounds to do it and beat a great 147 pound fighter in his prime. It was a monumental accomplishment. Before the end of this 11th round, tell us, how do you have the fight scored? Larry, I've got it 10 rounds to nothing, uh, 100 to 88. I gave Ray extra points in round six and rounds nine. I think he's just totally dominating with ring generalship. He just keeps moving. The ring can't hit him at all. Now there is blood around Leonard's left eye, though. And he may well be cut above the left eye. He is cut. I don't know where it came from, but it is cut. In an early round, it would be dangerous. Could have been from a headbutt again. All you have to do is move the female. No problem. Take a look, Ray. Let's no take problem. a look. Oh, yeah, hell, that's all right. What about, what about and Vaseline? Let's take a look and see if we can see where he got cut. There it is, a good right hand. One of the best punches of the fight, if not the best punch of the fight by Duran, and it did cut Ray. Probably came about 10 rounds too late to make a difference. I don't recall seeing Ray cut about the eyes before. He's been cut on the bridge of his nose, by under his eyes. 
uh, but never around the eyes. That's right on the lid and on the side. Could be dangerous if this was a much longer fight. And you heard his corner say, all you've got to do is stay away for three minutes. By any rational judging standard, surely they're right. about the sad death of a king. But it renews the boxing life of another king. Yeah, but what's Duran gonna do the next time he needs $7.6 million? He's gonna have to get a loan for the IRS. They can give it to him out of his past <laughs> fighting revenue. He will earn somewhere between seven and a half and nine million dollars for this fight. Ray Leonard will earn somewhere between 15 and 17 million dollars, making him the first prize fighter in history to gross over a hundred million dollars, according to his attorney and manager, Mike Trainer. Leonard's face now bloody but victorious man. I've never seen him look so bad while he was looking so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, that same eye was almost closed in the late rounds against Hearns when he rallied to knock Tommy out. And incidentally, for those of you who wonder about it, the most serious surgery was done on his right eye, the one where there isn't a cut. Indeed, this mask of blood now stands as an ironic symbol of the danger Ray Leonard carries with him every time he enters the ring. It hasn't cost him yet. Against Kevin Howard, against Marvin Hagler, against Donnie Lalonde, against Tommy Hearns, nor tonight against Roberto Duran. for the official decision. Cut man Eddie Aliano doing a job he's glad he didn't have to do in rounds two or three or four. Punch that statistics and you will see the overwhelming dominance of Ray Leonard in the fight. He threw 150 fewer punches. He landed 143 more punches. Duran landing at a rate of only 14%. Simply never could get inside close enough to Ray to do the kind of damage that Roberto Duran must do to win fights at 158, 160 pounds. Harold Letterman, your final card in the fight. Jim, 120 to 106, 12 rounds to none, a complete shutout for Ray Leonard, no question. He had finessed him, he had boxed him, he had controlled him, he had punched him. It was all Ray Leonard. Eight point rounds in the sixth and the ninth. I doubt that you've ever had too many more lopsided cards than that in a championship fight. And now we go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. Jury Rob scores the bout 
119 to 109. Joe Cortez scores it, 116 to 111. And Bob Logis scores about 120 to 110 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World Sugar, Ray Lindner. Well, the great irony of Ray Leonard's present career status is that he grows ever more outrageously wealthy at a time when the boxing public's long romance with him seems to be diminishing. Tonight, Leonard, according to his attorney, Mike Trainer, became the first boxer in the history of the sport to have earned more than $100 million in his career. But there were boos when the decision was announced and boos as Ray Leonard left the ring. In the 25-year-old words of a couple of English songwriters, money can't buy me love. Ray Leonard isn't into love anymore. He appears to be more into self-respect. And tonight, with a public be damned fight strategy, he earned a large measure of that. As for Roberto Duran, he stuck around not to see if he was still respected anymore. He left the ring in a big hurry at the end of the bout. And our Larry Merchant went into Duran's dressing room to talk to him. Roberto, give us your assessment of the fight. Bueno, la pelea fue buena, pero yo sé que Leona no me ganó y el, el árbitro tampoco me dejó pelear. El Leona no vino a pelear, vino fue a correr. Yo sabía que él venía a eso. Yo estaba preparado para esas cosas. He thought the fight was okay, but you know, hey, Leonard never came to fight. He, he knows Leonard did not beat him. You know, Leonard just came to run, and you know, the the referee was on, on Leonard's side. It appeared that Leonard was trying to fight the same fight he fought in your second fight. Is that how you see it? Parece que Leonard peleó la misma pelea, que sí. trató de pelear la segunda pelea que sí, hizo contigo en Nueva Orleans. Sí, correcto. Él no, él no va más de ahí. Yo creo que Leona, con estos jueces que él tiene aquí, yo creo que nadie va a querer pelear con él porque todas se la dan a él. Uh, correct, you know, but, you know, Leonard don't give any more than that. But, you know, nobody's going to want to fight Leonard here. With the judges he's got here and the way he fights, nobody's going to want to fight Leonard. It appeared from the beginning that his hands were quicker than yours. Did you feel that? And what could you do about it? Al principio de la pelea parecía que las manos de Leonard eran un poquito más rápido de tu, que las tuyas. ¿Tú creíste eso y qué es lo que tú pudiste hacer? No, nunca, nunca. He never thought it nunca, nunca. Never. ¿Sabes que los primeros saltos siempre uno se va calentando? The first rounds you always get warmer, you know, that's the way it is. You start off always, you get a little warmer. Towards the end of the fight, your handlers were telling you that you had to do something dramatic, you had to uh, stop him, but you seemed unable to get going. Why? Acabando la pelea, la gente en la esquina te estaba diciendo que tenía que hacer una cosa dramática, que tenías que pararlo. Eh, pero tú no pudiste, no podías hacer nada. No sí, podía... no, no, no es que no podía hacer nada, es que tampoco podía entrar a lo loco, porque que, si yo entraba a lo loco, él me podía poner por una derecha, que es lo que estaba esperando eso. Not that he couldn't do nothing, he couldn't enter like a crazy man either, because if he entered like a crazy man, he could have gotten caught too. Did the cut over Leonard's eye come just a little bit too late for you? La cortada en el ojo de Leonard vino un poco tarde en la pelea. Puede ser que sea un poco tarde. A little bit late. Pero bueno, si hubiera sido temprano, hubiera sido tarde, aquí lo, lo iban a comparecer de todo modo. It doesn't matter if it was early or late, you know, the judges here always give them to Leonard. You waited so long and tried so hard to get this fight again. Do you feel any satisfaction at least that you got the fight and that you did your best? Tú esperaste tanto tiempo para recibir esta pelea. Ahora que la pelea pasó, ¿tú sientes satisfacción que por lo menos tuviste la pelea? Bueno, ya estoy satisfacción que tuve la pelea y que el mundo vio quién es Roberto Durán. Roberto Durán no es un cobarde. He says he's better satisfied and the whole world saw that Roberto Durán is a cobarde. ¡Bravo! 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 Roberto, do you make any concessions to the fact that you are, after all, 38 years old and not 25 or 30 anymore? Roberto, ¿tú haces alguna excusa que tú tienes 38 años ahora, no 35 ni 30? No, hay una excusa. <laughs> you don't want to make any excuses. No, como voy a que voy a como hace un viejo a los 38 años. Young boy, young boy, young boy. A young boy. Does that mean that this young boy is going to continue to fight and defend his middleweight championship? Dice que esta persona joven va a seguir peleando, va a seguir defendiendo su título. Bueno, yo voy a Nueva York ahora, voy a Nueva York, después voy a Miami, voy a descansar un rato y voy a ver qué es lo que toca hacer. I'll be going to New York, to then Miami, to then I'll uh, be resting a little bit, and uh, then I'll see what happens. 
Roberto, thank you so much. Él no es hombre para retirarme a mí. Sugar Ray Leonard is not a man retire me. Yeah. 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 Coming up on tonight's telecast, we'll talk to Sugar Ray Leonard via satellite for his impressions of the fight and his future plans. You'll see highlights of the most revealing moments of the fight with Ray Leonard's comments. And we'll ask Ray Leonard about possible future opponents and the ever-present question of retirement. That's what caused mass hunting after the fight. No massing, Mickey massing, and mass disappointment. Was it justified? Let's go to the satellite, to Ray Leonard in Washington. Thanks for joining us again, Ray. You gave a lot of blood in this fight, 60 stitches worth. But apparently, that's not the kind of blood the crowd really wanted. The crowd wanted the blood of passion and of drama, and it didn't feel it got it. Was that why they were disappointed? Well, you know, Larry, I don't really know why the crowd was booing Duran. He was doing the best he could. I had somewhat of an infallible performance up until I decided to go inside and try to mix it up in the fourth and also in the 11th round when I sustained those these cuts. Uh, basically, I was doing what I was doing back in 1980 in New Orleans. It was only a continuation. After the fight, Duran said, you're not the kind of man who can retire him. He said he would at least get satisfaction because whenever you looked in the mirror in the future, you would see the scars of these fights, this fight. What's your reaction to that? Well, Lord, thank God I can afford some very, very uh, sophisticated and well-capable uh, specialists who I've had plastic surgery, so I think Duran is in for a big surprise. Should Roberto Duran retire now? He has a right to continue his career. I think that Duran, you know, without question, Larry, has proven himself as a champion. Styles make fights. I think people fail to realize that styles make fights. And I would have beaten Duran if I, as long as I fight him in that style, I would beat him each and every time out. You know, it's like fighting Tommy Hearns. It would be the same kind of fight because Tommy Hearns is a big, strong, tall, fast individual. Fighting a guy like Lalonde, always an awkward fight because he's awkward, he's unorthodox, and he's strong. Did you make Roberto Duran quit in this fight, quit on his feet? Because he never really made an attempt to get you at the end of the fight. Larry, I was never a stationary target. You know, there was uh, the general consensus that I didn't have any legs because of my last performance against Tommy Hearns back in June. But uh, I moved practically the uh, entire 12 rounds. So Duran never really had a stationary target so he can unload. You take, for example, his fight with Aaron Barkley. Because Barkley was right in front of him, Duran looked like the Duran of old. Ray, let's turn to some of the highlights with your comments. They begin in round three, and there were highlights. Ray, you said that you felt you had him in the third round. What was the tip-off? Well, Larry, I was very fluent, and my punches were so accurate. I was able to get in and get out, which bothered Duran a great deal. This was somewhat reminiscent of the fight in New Orleans. In, get in and get out without him being able to land a punch. Later in the round, you start to taunt him. Did you plan it this time? Well, everything was extemporaneous. I mean, it was like kind of natural for me to do these things because I put myself in a position with foot movement, battle movement, to do it. Now, in round four, you came out with a fat lip. How did it happen? Well, what happened there, I was really trying to accommodate the crowd with some inside fighting. And here you notice he inadvertently hit with his head, and uh, it was a severe cut. Did you feel the crowd was already spurring you on or already unhappy? Well, to be honest with you, Larry, I really wasn't listening to the crowd. I was pretty much doing my own thing after I sustained this cut because that's what got me in trouble trying to accommodate the crowd. 
did the taste of blood give you a rush of blood in any way? Well, it made me stay on the outside a lot more. It made me box a much more intelligent fight, box inside out, and not being a stationary target. But in this sixth round, you went right at him. I thought I really had him this time. Durant proved to me that he had a pretty good chin. I mean, I did some pretty good shots, some solid shots, and here you notice I'm darting in and out, and it's bringing his rhythm up a great deal. Did, did, did the fact that you landed some punches in this fight, some of which were pretty heavy punches right here, convince you that you really weren't going to knock him out? Well, after I, I landed some pretty good right hands, though, I knew that Durant was there to stay. But you notice I also started going to the body a great deal. I and mean, a lot of times I would just finish up with a body shot. And that proved to me that Durant came to fight. So that he was as ready mentally and emotionally as he could be, even if he didn't have a lot to offer physically. I think he hit around the head, Larry. He was ready emotionally. Now, in this round, Ray, you landed a punch that I think would have ended almost any other fight you fought. Right there. Let's take a look at it in slow motion. Describe it. Well, Larry, you know, I set him up with the jab in the right hand. I put my whole body, perfect leverage behind that punch. I was surprised that Duran didn't go down. And I guess if you needed any more convincing, that convinced you that he was there to go the distance. Well, that showed me, Larry, that he had legs to stand under. Ray, in the 11th round, you sustained the worst cut of your career. How did it happen? Well, I think, Larry, I got a little comfortable, you know, because I laid inside just too long. Here, it was perfect punch that Duran threw the right hand which gave me a severe cut. You know, here again, I laid in too long. What I should have done was throw my punch and then continue to move. When you went back to the corner, you looked like a mess. Did it concern you about your eye at all? Well, naturally, when the doctor comes up to, uh, to check it out, naturally it bothers any fighter, especially when you don't know the severity of it. But with... Uh, the kind of cut man I had, I was in good hands. Twelfth and final round, you're way ahead, yet you suffered another 20-stitch gash. When did it happen? Well, Larry, it happened just before the bell. I got hit by a left hook. How decisive was Ray Leonard's victory? Here's how the judges saw it on their uh, dance cards. The first three rounds were unanimous for Leonard except for an even round. In the next three rounds, Joe Cortez of New Jersey gave two rounds to Duran. Again, all unanimous in the 7th, 8th, and 9th. And again, in the 10th, 11th, and 12th, Cortez gave two rounds to Duran. Here's the final scores. Given the terrible reviews the fight got, now you're going to see some truly fascinating numbers. Our punch stat shows that Ray Leonard actually landed more punches and harder punches in this fight and then in the second fight, while Roberto Duran landed fewer punches. Ray, having seen that, I have to ask you this question. Somewhere along the way, you seem to have been put into a no-win situation. Your golden boy image somehow tarnished, where you got too hit too much by Tommy Hearns, and you didn't get hit enough by Roberto Duran. How do you explain this turnaround? Well, you know, it's fascinating to me, Larry, but I think that people that go out on a limb to predict a winner, and when it doesn't take place, like they said or stated, they try to find a way to justify. But for me, I just continue to do my thing, Larry. I just continue to win. Do you think that because you got what a lot of people thought was an unfair draw against Hearns, that the public holds that against you? I don't think it's the public per se, because uh, they keep telling me that I'm losing public interest and public support. And you know, Larry, each and every time I step out into the ring, I always get more and more fan support. I think this is pretty much the people that state that, which is a very uh, small uh, group of people. It's a minority. This. You've tried to describe the difference between Ray Leonard and Sugar Ray Leonard. Explain it. Well, Sugar Ray Leonard has tunnel vision, and that's 
who appeared in the ring Thursday night. Ray Leonard, he's he's very conservative. In fact, he just works for HBO. <laughs> uh, you got to go a little further than that, Ray. Come on, you were talking about a different style of fighter almost. No, really, Larry. I think Ray Leonard is a guy that doesn't take risk. He uh, he sits back and he tries to uh, understand each and everything. Whereas that a Sugar Ray Leonard is the fighter. I was a fighter Thursday night. We're going to go back to the future next, Ray. What or who is next for Ray Leonard? Is he going to go back into the spotlight or fade into the sunset? Will an eight-figure payday lure Marvin Hagler out of his retirement? Will the bad taste of the second Hearns fight force Leonard into a rubber match with him? Or will youth bust up the seniors tour in the name of Michael Nunn? Question, who amongst these three candidates will Ray fight next? Or will he opt for a final retirement? It's clear that Ray Leonard still has some fighting left in his body. But does he have it left in his head and his heart? Ray, when this fight was announced, you said you'd rather fight one more fight than you had left in you than one less fight, so that you got everything out of you that you have in you. After such a performance, which you call infallible, why wouldn't you fight again? Well, like you said, Larry, it's all, it's mental now, because uh, at this stage of my career, every fight must mean something to get me motivated, because if I'm not, if I'm not motivated, it becomes somewhat detrimental. You suffered three knockdowns and 60 stitches in your last three fights. How will that influence your decision? Well, it won't have any bearing on my decision making because right now, Larry, I tell you, I want to enjoy my kids, the holidays, and this particular victory. Give me a ranking of the possibilities from on a scale of one to 10, Marvin Hagler. He's a 10. Tommy Hearns. He's a 10. Michael Nunn. He's a 10. Retirement. That's a 10. <laughs> Why don't you get off the fence just a little bit, Ray? Let me put it this way. You've just talked about challenges. And you seem to be in best, not only when you're challenged, but when you feel almost endangered. Wouldn't Michael Nunn provide that for you right now more than Hagler or Hearns, who you have fought in the last couple of years? I think Michael Nunn uh, has the potential to be a great fighter, a great champion. I think it's somewhat premature uh, for him to say, well, I can beat Ray. You know, I think it's what the public demands, Larry. Uh, again, I keep emphasizing, at this stage in my career, it has to be a very, very significant challenge for me. You say what the public demands, but what do you demand? What, what do you need? What kind of challenge do you need that none could provide that perhaps the others can't? Stimulation. And right now, Michael doesn't give me that. Uh, right now, no one has given me that. You know, what took place Thursday night was stimulating and gratifying. And who knows, Dar? they might be just enough for me to say, hey, thanks for everything. Thank you, Ray, for joining us again. Uh, I know that after that purse, you'll be able to treat Santa Claus very well. And we'll see you when two other champions fight. We'll see you at ringside for Nunn and Starling in January. Finally, this. It would be swell to be able to guarantee blood and guts, guys bouncing off the ropes in the canvas, 
dramatic shifts of fortune in every match. But only a wrestling promoter can do that. There's no guarantee even that great old acts like Leonard Hagler II or Leonard Hearns III would provide thrilling theater, although they'd no doubt pack them in again. My own preference is Leonard Nunn won. Old champion versus new champion. The sort of challenge Ray Leonard thrives on. The only challenge he hasn't taken on yet. A no-loose challenge because he would be expected to lose and all great champions have passed the torch in such matches. And he just might win. For Jim Lampley and the HBO staff, I'm Larry Merchant. The executive producer of HBO Sports and the producer for Leonard Duran was Ross Greenberg. The director was Mark Payton. The associate producer was Michael Whalen. The associate directors were Dave Harmon, Steve Salvatore, and Jay Cutlow. The assistants to the producer were Brian McDonald and Kendall Reed. The production manager was Russell Gabay. And the technical manager was George Wenzel.